I'm sure you're familiar with the term ironclad. What is ironclad? That's solid. When someone makes an ironclad commitment, that's a solid commitment. That means I'm really, truly committed to this. If I may say absolutely, that's what would make it ironclad really, really solid. In 1922, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe gathered nine of his Hasidim, nine of his followers, and he said, we're in a very critical time in Russia, in the former Soviet Union. Communis communism had taken over. A, a religion was outlaws, outlawed. <clears throat> and if there was one religion that communism was trying to quash more than any other, it was Judaism. And if it was Judaism, in particular, it was Hasidic Judaism, because the Chabad Hasidim, Demonstrated, demonstrated ironclad commitment. And the Friedrich Rebbe gathered these two very close followers of his and said, I'd like to make a Chrysos Bris. A Chrysos Bris is basically a treaty, a treaty together that we are going to be committed to spreading and making available all forms of Jewish observance and Torah study to the Jewish people, despite all of the opposition and challenges that we are having. And this is going to be an ironclad commitment, in his words, to the last drop of blood that we have. These nine, he said, I and the nine of you together form a minion. A minion is, is 10 men, which is very powerful, 10 Jews which is very powerful, and that will give us the power to uphold this commitment. And in fact, a good number of this group actually died in their commitment to supporting Judaism because it was an ironclad commitment. And part of what made it ironclad was the fact that they made this treaty together. The whole idea of a treaty is that nothing should be able to break the commitment that we're making. And that's why we, so to speak, sign a treaty, right? We make a treaty. And especially when a group comes together and the group says together that all of us together are committing to this. Now we're as a single group, one person breaks this commitment and then we, this group is no longer whole. That helps to bolster us and strengthen us in our commitment. There's something very powerful about when a person commits to something absolutely. And when we introspect and we ask ourselves, do I ever commit to something absolutely? Is there anything I can point to that I am committed to absolutely? It makes us wonder. And it's worthwhile to firstly discover that there are definitely things that we are absolutely committed to. But what are those things that I wish I was committed to? My value system is there, but I haven't gotten there, and I want to align myself up with that value system. When we do that, we are being a very powerful human being because we are standing with an iron ironclad commitment to something. We read a story in the Torah, in the portion of Chukas, where we have a, a repeated occurrence of something that happened 40 years earlier when the Jews just came into the desert. When the Jews had just come into their desert on the way from Egypt to Mount Sinai, they don't have water to drink. They complain to Moses, did you bring us here to die of thirst? And what does God tell Moses to do? God tells Moses to go to a rock and to hit it. And after he hit that rock, water came shooting out, and that became what we know as the Be'er Shal Miriam, the wellspring of Miriam. We call it the wellspring of Miriam because the water that we received was in the merit of, in the merit of Moshe's sister Miriam, Moses' sister Miriam. And the Jews had water to drink for 40 years coming out of this rock. At the end of the, once, uh, towards the end of the 40 years, Miriam passes away. And when Miriam passes away, the rock stops giving water. It was all in her merit. And the Jews again complain to, to, to Moses, why did you take us out of Egypt? To die here from thirst. And Mo, uh, Moses turns to God and God says, this time to speak to the rock. 
And there's much to discuss about this story, but I just want to discuss one point, and that is the rock. Why did God perform this unusual miracle of water coming out of a rock? It's completely unnatural. God could have performed a more natural miracle. Have a stream show up in the desert through the 40 years. What significance was there in water coming out of a rock? And what's interesting is that in the next Torah portion of Balak, we have a story about a king by the name of Balak, who's terrified that the Jewish people are going to come into his land on their way to the land of Israel where they are traveling. And he hires a Gentile prophet by the name of Bilam with the purpose of cursing the Jewish people. And the very first prophecy that flows out of Bilam's mouth, after he states that I can only say that which God puts in my mouth is, the first statement he says is, Ki me rosh tsurim arenu, which means, Ki me rosh, from their beginning, from their very outset. Tsurim arenu, I see tsur, tsur is a rock. I see that they are a rock. He was basically saying, that the Jewish people are standing on a rock-solid foundation. Because their beginning, as Rashi explains, their forefathers, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, are absolutely solid like a rock. And therefore, they are stable, and there is no way to destabilize the Jewish people. History has proven this to be true. We have hindsight now to see. 2020 hindsight to see the truth of this. However, at that time he was saying, there's no way I can curse them and weaken them. Because from their outset, they have their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's another significance to the fact that he says that from their outset, surim arenu, I see a rock. And that is that there is a characteristic which we inherited from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A characteristic which is that we can be very stubborn. Stubborn people are like a rock. You can talk to them, argue with them, prove to them, but they're stubborn. They stand in their place and they do their thing. Ironclad commitment. And he says the reason why Bilaam, this Gentile prophet says, I cannot curse them is because they are ironclad in their commitment. That is actually a strength that we have. That is something that is very powerful, what most powerful for a person. And this is what's unique about the Jewish people. Because being stubborn can be something which is very negative, as we know, because we can be irrationally stubborn. But then there's being stubborn in commitment to something. That I know this to be true. This is a value that I have on good faith from God. And therefore, there is nothing for me to discuss about it. I am committed to it. That stubbornness is powerful because nothing gets, of, gets us off the path of our values. There's irrational and there's super rational. Irrational is foolishness, right? We get hung up on some idea or something that we want and we become stubborn about it. That brings out our ugliness. There's something else, though, and that is when a person rises above any form of rationalization because they are committed to what God has taught us is a value and right. And even though I may not fully understand it, or you may sit and rationally tell me why it's wrong, I'm committed to God and God-given values. I'm not committed to the reason I understand why this value should be a value. That's why... Godly values are eternal, and our commitment then to them are, is eternal. They're non-negotiable. Greatness of a person is ironclad commitment to divine values. When we take just one value or one additional value that God has given us that we should be doing, and I say, this will be my new expression, of ironclad commitment, of being impenetrable. That is what makes us the eternal Jewish people.